Most Tuesday mornings about 9 o'clock, Dan Looney, a friend of Ken, brings Ken Foldo into the lighthouse for visitation, cup of coffee, a little bite to eat. This was the day I came with my camera and sat down and talked with Ken with the help of Dan to talk about his experiences during World War II. A little hard to understand sometimes, but we'll get through it after he has his coffee and his caramel roll. Ken, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. What I'm here to find out about is your World War II time. Were you drafted or did you join? No, I, I was, uh, I, I, they wanted to give me a, a deferment uh, for uh, farm work, but I said, I don't want to do that. Well, I said, you got to go to me and this, so that's what I did. <laughs> so they wanted to give you a deferment, but you said, no, I'm going to join. Yeah. And what year was that? Oh, geez. 44, 43? Maybe 43. Uh, uh, do you know what year was he going down? It must have been about 43. Okay. Uh, where did you go to basic training? Uh, Camp Roberts, California. 20 miles, 20 miles from Death Valley. 20 miles from Death Valley, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you had your basic training. And what was your next assignment when you left basic training? Well, uh, they, uh, the, the training I got was machine gun and rifle, and uh, they stuck me through me and uh, and the rifles uh, company. The only uh, machine gun I used was the one I captured belonging to the Japs. Well, wait a minute, when you when you left basic training, do you remember where you were sent to? Yeah, uh, <coughs> we stopped at the uh, Hawaiian Islands and then uh, okay. they loaded up more guys and... You were, the, you were in Hawaii for yeah. how... then you got sent to where? Uh, well, I went to Australia. Australia. Sydney. Okay. Sydney. Sydney, Australia. Yeah. All right. And then... Uh, they uh, they put me on a uh, narrow gauge railroad, and we went straight north. We went through uh, Brisbane and Rockhampton, and uh, we got up north there. And we took some more training, you know, everything we lay around, and um, then eventually. Uh, I went uh, sent to New, Gu New Guinea, and we did a little fighting there. You were in New Guinea, and it hadn't been liberated yet in New Guinea. Well, yeah, it had, but we had um, we went out to uh, uh, capture an airfield. Capture an oil field in airfield. New yeah. Airfield in New Guinea. Yeah. So your um, your company was in charge of capturing the air, airfield. Um, well, I joined the 24th Division. The 24th Division. Yeah. And, uh, but yes, that was their mission was to capture the, an airfield on New Guinea. The only um, but they had a zero set in the end of the. Uh, and uh, one of my buddies, he jumped in that down ground zero and bunked around and he hit a, one of my buddies in the legs. That's the only... Uh, they, when they got there, there was a zero setting on the runway. The, Jap, the Japs had cleared out. So one of his buddies gets up in the zero and mm -hmm. accidentally hits the trigger on that zero and shot one of the guys through the leg. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Ken though. No, wasn't Ken. Okay. But uh, and that was the only casualty for the whole operation. They said it was wow. for that. So crazy. So you're lucky. So you were shot at a few times then. Oh yeah. But they missed, yeah. obviously. I'll have to, uh, I'll go into a little story. Okay. Uh, we was uh, dug in for the night, 
and I, I took my hand knife and uh, looking for some little poles to make a shelter at. Seemed like it rains all the time there. And uh, I just took this knife and made a swing into some little trees. And, and uh, my buddy, he, uh, he seen me in there, so he came down and he said, there's a Jap behind you. I, I, he was digging into a hole off Oxo, as everybody calls it. And all I could see was his rifle. So I motioned for the buddy to be quiet, and I sneaked up and grabbed his rifle, and he wouldn't let it go. And when I was pulling him, I couldn't pull it towards me because I thought he might pull the trigger. So I had to pull sideways, but my buddy kept saying, uh, kill him, kill him. Well, all I had was a knife. And so I had to just cut his throat, too. And mm -hmm. that was the end of that. Yeah, who told you to, you, did you say your brother or your buddy? No, one of my buddies, yeah. One of my buddies. So this guy was standing, he, you're lucky he didn't shoot you. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it, mm -hmm. uh, But, um, uh, no, the only uh, machine gun, uh, we captured a Jap machine gun. And, uh, uh, How long um, were you on the, uh, in New Guinea then? Well, it wasn't very really long. Uh, the 24th Division uh, headquarters was there. Okay. And uh, four truckloads of whiskey come in to, for the officers. <laughs> and uh, I was gaining down, uh, garden down to the beach, uh, about a hundred feet, and the MPs were guarding running around us. But then they changed guard with a jeep, you know. But I had to walk. But <laughs> one of the MPs motioned for me to come up to him, so I come up to him and he said, "Here, there's a quarter of four roses." Four roses. Four oh, roses. I said, they'll shoot me. They kicked me right on uh, on drug. Nah, he said, don't worry about it. Shoot was inside of my shirt. And, uh, so you took the case of whiskey and took it where? Well, it was just a bottle. Oh, it was a bottle. Um, okay. And I, uh, when I got back to the, we were staying with my buddies, I had a tent. And uh, I sold it for $40. You made some money. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were a huckster. <laughs> so, okay, when you... Well, going, go, going back to this woman that I just killed, a guy, uh, he, uh, the phone rang, and uh, he said, you're one on the phone. He said, I don't know I, uh, how to start this story. Somebody said, you went out there to... Take a <laughs> you got a phone call where now? From the from somebody the uh, guy who writes stories. Somebody who writes stories. Now yeah. you're in New Guinea when this happens. Where are you? Mm, no, that's that was, must have been Where's, back here because that newspaper article. Oh yes, is yes, in yes. the book. Okay, There's let's the, let's stay with New Guinea. Where did you go when you le left New Guinea? What was your next stop? Well, there was no stops until we were, uh, they figured out uh, what part of New Guinea, uh, the Philippines, they should hit. And uh, of course, the jab thought we'd come from the south, the New Guinea's on the south end of the yeah, Philippines. But right. we went way up to Leyte. Lady? Lady. Lady. The island? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, there we stayed there for the, the end. Was, was, the, was the fighting over in Lady when you got there? Was the fighting over with? Uh, no. Because the Marines were on, on Lady. Yeah, well. Do you recall what, what was going on on Lady when you got there? Well, it wasn't too much as a certain place. Um, uh, I know we've taken a break there, and and four, uh, not.
three uh, Jap uh, zeros, I guess uh, they were two. So the, the only the, the, the combat you were involved in was in New Guinea. And that, that was the only place you had combat. Uh, no, that was that was one really in old hardly no combat at all. New you Guinea. Really Guinea. Had combat at? Uh, Where'd you do your? But I know I was going to finish this one story. Okay. Uh, so that was the end of that. Uh, Where are we? Okay, let's 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 stick with the Pacific. How how long were you in the Pacific? Do you well, remember? How many days did you see combat? How many days were you in combat? 160. 160 days in combat. Uh, were there other places you went to besides New Guinea and the Philippines? Uh, well, no, we, um, there was no combat, but we were in uh, Australia. For, yeah. Where'd you do your fighting at? Where was the worst fighting at? Which island were you on where the worst fighting was at? Well, I, I, um, uh, one uh, place uh, I really enjoyed it. That, they had a sawmill, and we had orders to go up there because the Americans were running a sawmill, and the guys at Jap at night were coming down and throwing grenades. So uh, we had a job to stay there for a while. And well, well, he, his question is, where was the worst fighting at? Do you remember what island the worst fighting was? Well, it was no... Uh, where we traveled, actually, most of the time, uh, after we dug in for the night, uh, seemed like a Jap would, would uh, always go, uh, travel someplace at night. See, and okay, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out which location was. The worst fighting. Well, Can you remember that, Pan? It's uh, the islands going south from Lady. Uh, okay, so you went. You did some island hopping then. Huh? You did some island hopping. You went from island to island. Yeah. Well, most of the fighting was uh, uh, one night. I had that Jap reunion all set up and and. Uh, it was good. I took the machine gun training. There's the list of the islands, the 24th Division. Uh, it was good. I had the training because you, for night shooting, you freeze it so it don't go up and down. You put it on a certain height and you freeze it so it don't go up and down. It's a machine gun, so it just. Machine gun won't. Cool. Okay. Up or down, you set it right in the daylight. Now this is this is your machine gun or a Japanese? No, a Japanese. Now did you did you overtake that machine gun? Yeah, we captured it during the day. Oh, okay. And uh, what island was that on? Do you remember? No. Okay. I used to talk to others and remember a lady, but. Uh, uh, to go, uh, they're not really the island, but to go south uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we okay. fought. When, uh, maybe we can't figure out which <laughs> islands. When the war came to an end, how, where were you when, it, when the bomb was dropped? Well, I was south in one of these, uh, probably the middle part of uh, the Philippines. But as far as the certain islands, I, okay. I don't remember. Do you, rem do you remember, how did somebody tell you the war was over? How did you know it was over? Um, well, uh, I think uh, the words uh, went pretty fast through the uh, most of the guys. Yeah, uh, that was after they dropped the atomic bomb. Do you remember where you were when that happened? Um, I, all I can say is about the middle of the middle of the Philippines. Middle of Philippines. I, I don't remember. So what. somebody told you that the war was over. Well, it, just about everything. Um, 
when uh, after we dropped the Tommy Gun. Okay. Where did, how soon did you go home after that? Oh, uh, it wasn't too long. I'm reading. Uh, seems like we didn't stay very long. And they had the. Uh, they take you by ship. Take and you I, by ship. Yeah, they had big boats, and it wasn't long. We just loaded up and headed, headed for. Uh, you came back Seattle. to the states then. Seattle and. Back to Seattle, and then you came. Uh, didn't you came back to this area when you left? When you left Seattle, <coughs> you came back to here. Yeah, it here? kept going, but we. We had to stay overnight, and then we got to have to give us a breakfast. And uh, about a half a dozen German prisoners. They were doing the cooking. They were. Where were they at? These German prisoners. Where were they? Well, this was in Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Okay. And uh, I said, "Jeepers! I'd hate to fight them. They look just like me." Yeah, uh, I fell apart. Mm -hmm. So you came back home, and home was where again? All in Bagley. Yeah. Bagley here. Yeah. And you went, and then from that, you had a whole new life. We're going to stay with what happened in World War II, and not go beyond that, because that's where we're, why we're taping this. Uh, you don't know more uh, stories about. Uh, sure. Uh, anyway, I'll finish that one uh, at the Jap machine gun. Yeah. They come. All of us come moving at night. We never move at night. We, and we're always digging a perimeter, round circle. Anything outside of that, you sh shoot. Uh, they they dug that machine gun down in the middle of the road in the daytime and lined it down the road, and he, he set it so it'd be shooting about a foot off where he could just swing it back and forth. Yeah, and that, here they come. And there's one guy... He tied two tourniquets on his legs. I hit him in both legs. Then he got down the ditch, and uh, I, I couldn't hit him anymore because I had it froze for the road. But anyway, he started singing out loud, and the guys on the opposite side of the perimeter, were, kill that asshole beast so I can get some sleep. Quiet, quiet so you can get some sleep. Yeah, I, I, but I couldn't shoot him if I hit him no more. Uh, but anyway, uh, he just figured he couldn't make it, so he killed himself. Pulled a grenade. And yeah. This guy was doing the singing? The, the Jap, yeah. Oh, the, the Japanese guy. The Japanese guy. He yeah. wounded him in both legs with that machine gun, and the guy crawled in the ditch and tied his tourniquets on. And then oh, because the machine gun hit him. Okay, he started singing. He started singing, and he pulled the pin on the grenade. Yeah, and killed himself. And, uh, okay. In the morning, we she had a bottle of sake, sake, I don't know what it's called, and he'd been drinking. Bottle of sake. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. There was a 12, 12 Japs laying in the road, is that what you said, about 12? Uh -huh. There was about 12 Japs laying in the road? Oh, yeah, I, I hit, hit quite a few. Uh, Were you on the machine gun yourself? Jap machine gun. Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, it was just a little old, same as ours, but um, there were a few things different. Yeah, the, uh, ours was the belt, feed, but they had a cut about 30, 40 rounds. Clip in there, it's just okay, stuck in there. Yeah. Right. <coughs> but uh, I was pulling guard, and I. Uh, You're pulling guard duty, you said? Yeah. We're all changed about each guy. Uh, each guy uh, got to pull about two sure. hours. So. Anyway, I was sitting, sitting right at the uh, edge of the road, and um, my buddy, he was dug in right there, a little behind me, because I had this, I, I was actually, I dug in about 100 feet from the road. So I was just sitting on the, on the ground, and uh, well, I heard them coming, and uh, I, I didn't. And there was a machine gun across the road, 
there was two doggone kids and I think they're both were sleeping. But anyway, I had to shoot. And this guy, he fell about this isn't <laughs> right beside of you, huh? Yeah. He fell one around me. What was this again? The guy fell? The, he, he wasn't on guard. A couple guys on the machine gun were supposed to be guarding, but they were asleep, evidently, because here come these Japanese soldiers, and he had to shoot, and when he shot, the guy almost hit him when he fell down. They were that close. Yeah. And uh, woke the machine gunners up and <laughs> got them operating. And when a Jap was laying about Joe distance, you, you know, you don't know for sure if he's dead. So I, a buddy behind me, he, uh, I said, give him a burst. So he had a Tommy gun and he shall have To make sure you mm -hmm. sure weren't faking it. Sure. But uh, anyway, um, I went and went to sleep. Over before I was sleeping, and then I, I woke up. Uh, the machine gun was shooting. I said, "What are you guys shooting at?" Oh, we seen a jab stick up his head in an artillery hole, and uh, I said, "Hold your fire! I'll go up and get him." So I wasn't scared of once I was dead around there. I looked at him to be sure that I did, but I walked in behind this guy. And uh, he just, he was pretty scared because uh, he didn't dare to run off, I guess. And anyway, I had to shoot because he, he, he might be holding a grenade. Yeah. Well, that was the end of that. Yeah. Wow. He's, uh, he's told me a lot of a lot of good stories, a lot of more combat type stories. And hard to remember some of them. Hard to get out. I'd, tell them about uh, tell them about when you found that green string across the trail. The what? The green oh, string. Oh yeah, that I don't know. That we got out of that alive. You know, he's taking a break. He always uh, kind of goof off a little and. And uh, the Filipinos, they're all gone. See, the house is empty. So we go in there. It was kind of a trail. It wasn't no road. It was just run off the trail. And uh, we looked around in the house and, and we decided to leave. So uh, I was the first one to leave. I said, hold it, guys. There was a green string across the trail. But this eye is tied to a 200 pound bomb. And here's the funny part. How could we step over that string without setting off that bomb? I think they put it up after you went by. Then yeah, they well, snuck yeah, it across. we walked over it then. Mm -hmm. And then I was the first to leave and I had just seen it. So mm -hmm. I... Uh, Followed in the woods a little, and they had, they had buried a bomb, and, and the way they had it, said they would take a piece of rubber and pull over the detonator, but then you got a pin in there, so you pull that pin, and the rubber snaps sets it off. And uh, the first thing I done, I cut the rubber, and uh, so. Uh, Mm, yeah, then uh, yeah, I, then didn't your captain ball you out because uh, you weren't supposed to be uh, yeah. I, uh, dismantling I, the bombs. You know, they had I, engineers uh, for that, but he took it apart right on yeah, the battlefield I, I, for him. I, uh, I'm dead, I'm screwed to that matter and took it to the guys that kind of sort of it. I, I wasn't supposed to touch them. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a simple deal. Uh, uh, you know. So you were you had some rough times to go through. You did. Can, uh, we'll talk some more after we get back to your house. Um, I want to say thank you for taking the time to talk to me. All right. Yeah, I do so well. Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.
He's got a lot of good stories. He's uh, making a log cabin there, but at age 65, he beat all the guys at the Buena Vista logging days yeah. for chopping. At 65, he took first place of all the, wow. the guys that come in from all over the now world. Now, he make they make the wooden chain he of He did, 16 foot. Uh, 16 foot? Uh, let's take that back, 12 foot uh, log chain, one piece. Made on one piece of wood? Mm-hmm, one piece of wood. How long did it take him to carve that? Mm, he said it's a long winter. What is this I'm looking at? Okay, that's uh, Fort Wheeler. He made that for his kids. Um, somewhere around here, he's got a picture of his son wearing a Yankee. Oh, he's right there. His son is right there wearing the Yankee uniform of the Civil War uh, on guard. He's just a big playhouse for the kids. Now, who's the lady in the photo up here? That is, I think that might have been one of his. Oh, that's his daughter. Okay. That's his youngest daughter. Okay, I'll get it. This is a tomahawk hatchet. It says Davy Crockett right on it somewhere. It does. Davy he must have Crockett. put that on there somewhere. He found it laying in the woods. He found the axe laying in the woods. That's old style, you know, they don't make them like that. Really. I have a hard time believing that Davy Crockett was in Bagley. Me too. But it uh, <laughs> must have been that style of a Davy Crockett model axe. He used to have a silver dollar glued to the middle, or it was stuck right there. Huh. It's set, so you're supposed to grab it. You know? right. <laughs> if you... Oh, no. He's got another old Japanese flag. It's just tore all to pieces. It doesn't look like he had trouble getting that one, too. This is the Viking helmet or something you made? Yeah. Yep. And he's got the sword to go with just it. Just for the kids. He done all that stuff just to make them, all his kids happy. Now, home. this is, he came home from the war and built this cabin? Yep. Hangs it, hung it up. 1949. And where is it, Bagley, Alaska, where? No, it's right here on Walker Brook Lake, about less than a mile from here, but uh, it burned down. Some kids uh, <coughs> built a campfire and it got away from them. Now, this is something he made? He made it. He did. Jeez. Played it in church. It's, uh... My gosh, well, when did he make this? When did you make this? Huh? When did you make this? When? Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, about 25 years ago. 25 years or so. My boy, he picked up the creases. <laughs> told he was They played it in church before. There have been quite a few people play it. They tune it right up and play away. Okay, laying under the under the uh, revolver. This is a mammoth tusk. Mm -hmm. this Which one's one? a tusk? Mammoth yeah. tusk. Okay. And then mammoth bones. And I believe these are the buffalo bones, prehistoric buffalo bones and horns that they dug up in a gold mine in Alaska. Okay. What is this long thing? That is a piece of baleen, and that is out of a whale's mouth, probably like a blue whale. That, uh, and that's what they filter the plankton that they eat with. And there's about 25, at least 20 pieces of that inside of a whale's mouth. It must be eight feet long. It is, and that's been cut in half. I think it's actually longer. So this is a mammoth tooth, a woolly mammoth tooth. Where the heck do you find a woolly mammoth tooth? His buddy dug it up up in Alaska gold mining. 
Jeez. Mm -hmm. oh, is it heavy? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll take your word. Okay. <laughs> Hygiene, I, I wouldn't recognize it as a tooth. No. Nope. Someone did. Yeah, it is. This, here's a... You want me to tell him the story or you want to? Go, go ahead, tell me the story. Well, this is a Japanese flag and this is all the names oh. written on it by the guys that you know must have been in this division. Now, this is the, this is the Japanese names. Mm -hmm. Japanese names. What am I looking at here? This, who made the boat? I did. You made the boat. I did. The, is the it? The hull is one of the first ones I ever carved. You carved this by hand. Mm-hmm. Jeez. And you got a dog sled you carved by hand. Ken was known for his workmanship in building log homes. Look at this one with a thatched roof. And of course he was a hunter. Besides doing log houses, he did totem poles. And they were all over the place at one time. Well, you've seen he's good with wood and good with carving. He brought a log house on a big trailer to the sawdust days in Shevlin about 10 years ago. I have that video someplace. This is my favorite all lit up with Christmas lights and snow all over the place. Some of the log homes that Ken has built on his property still stand today. After 100 days in combat, they gave Ken seven medals. These were the Silver Star, Purple Heart, Bronze Star, Filipino Liberation, Good Conduct, and the Asian Pacific Campaign Ribbon. <laughs> 